She began her career as a teenage extra in Michael Bay's Bad Boys 2, as a bikini dancing girl under a waterfall. Not too long after, this young actress would find herself starring in Michael Bay's Transformers. Suddenly, she was a household name, and that name was Megan Fox. Yet, the past few years, she has become more famous for her tabloid headlines than her work on the screen. Is it because her personal life is far more interesting than the direct-to-video schlock that she's been releasing recently? Or could it be a controversial comment comparing a certain ill-tempered control freak director to a certain ill-tempered control freak dictator? Maybe that put the brakes on her career. Or did she mutate and transform into something else? Something that only Machine Gun Kelly could handle. So let us discuss what the f*** happened to Megan F***. But to truly understand what the fuck happened to Megan Fox, we must begin at the beginning of the beginning began when she was born on her birthday, 1986, Tennessee, United States of America. Her career began as a model, and her first movie role would be opposite Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen in the direct-to-video film Holiday in the Sun in 2001. And this film had the tagline, Filmed at the Bahamas. This would land her guest spots on shows like What I Like About You, Two and a Half Men, and a main role on the Swedish low-budget soap opera Ocean Avenue, or Ocean Ave. Is that what the cool kids say? These roles would help Megan Fox land a role opposite Lindsay Lohan in the teen comedy Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen in 2004, where she would play the quote-unquote mean girl of that school. This film, Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, didn't exactly light the world on fire, but it did decent enough business pulling in two times its budget. Money! But the key here for Miss Megan Fox was exposure. Fox had now shown that she could take on bigger roles, including a role opposite future Oscar winner Miss Marvel, Brie Larson, in the ABC series Hope and Faith. And then came Transformers in 2007. This epic flick would launch Megan Fox into superstar stratosphere. And a lot of people really like this movie, and a lot of people really hate this movie, but you know what, all I can say is nobody blows shit up like Michael Bay. You gotta respect that. And yeah, yeah, I know, I've heard all the stuff that Transformers doesn't have exactly, you know, like, character development and stuff. But you know what, the robot fights are cool, and Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox, they have great chemistry in these movies. I'm not exactly a fan of this franchise, but I respect it. Transformers was, of course, a massive hit and would see a sequel, because money. This sequel was called Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, released just two years later. This one would receive some pretty harsh reviews, and would suffer from the 2007-2008 writer's strike. But hey, this loud mess of a movie made one billion dollars. However, this would be Megan's first, and certainly not last, run-in with the Razzie Awards, when she was nominated for Worst Actress and Worst On-Screen Couple alongside Shia. These Transformer movie film things would see Megan Fox become a mainstay of magazine covers. For a while, she was quite literally everywhere. Like, you go to a gas station, there's her face. You go to an airport, there's her face. You go to a magazine store, and there's her face. And her body. Of course, as we all know, the Transformers franchise would continue past just the first two movies. Yet, Miss Megan Fox would not. In a 2019 magazine interview, the actress would say that Michael Bay likes to be like Hitler on his sets, saying that he is a nightmare to work with. But then she went on to say that when he's not on set, she actually really likes being around his awkward personality. Michael Bay himself would say that he was not bothered by the Hitler comments, but as it turns out, Michael Bay is just one of a vast team that put together these Transformer movies. And you know who else was a member of this production team? The director of Schindler's List, Steven Spielberg. Perhaps not the smartest thing to compare someone to Hitler when your boss directed Schindler's List, or any time, but yeah, especially then. Director Michael Bay would claim that after Megan Fox's Adolf Hitler remarks, Steven Spielberg told him to fire her immediately from the next Transformers movie. 
It would also seem that the crew of these Transformer movies weren't fans of Megan Fox either, as several members of the crew would pen an open letter where they would vigorously defend their director while also taking aim at Megan Fox for what they call entitlement and lack of professionalism on set. After appearing in How to Lose Friends and Alienate People, followed by a film called Whore, it would seem that Hollywood was trying their best to make Megan Fox happen. She would headline the Diablo Cody-pinned Jennifer's Body, and even though it was not a massive hit in its day, this movie has gone down to be appreciated as a nice little dark comedy, horror flick. Megan Fox would also follow that up by starring alongside Josh Brolin in the comic book movie Jonah Hex in 2010. Which, in full disclosure, I've never actually seen Jonah Hex, but neither did anyone else judging by its box office. Both of these films, Jennifer's Body and Jonah Hex, would give Fox another two Razzie nominations for Worst Actress. She wasn't that bad, right? Megan Fox would follow up those two disappointments with smaller roles. First up, she would star opposite another outspoken actor, Mickey Rourke, for the basically direct-to-video film, even though it made like $3,000 in theaters, Passion Play, followed by a pretty solid turn in a romantic comedy called Friends with Kids, as well as a funny cameo as herself, in Sasha Baron Cohen's The Dictator. And we cannot forget a really excellent supporting role in Judd Apatow's knocked up pseudo sequel, This Is 40, in the year 2012, where Megan Fox is genuinely funny and likable, a really great performance. And even though in these films like Friends with Kids and This Is 40, where she plays more of a complex layered character, unfortunately we're still variations on that quote unquote hot girl character. Megan Fox couldn't get over her foxy lady syndrome, which I'm sure we can all relate to. Enter director Michael Bay, again who proved that those controversial Hitler comments made by a younger Megan Fox didn't phase him at all when he horribly miscast her as April O'Neil, everybody's favorite reporter, in the 2014 take on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And look, these movies are in no way, shape, or form as good as the original movies or most of the cartoons. But hey, you know, they were, uh... Fun. No, actually, these, these were horrible. And of course, the critical reception of this new turtle stuff was lackluster. And Megan Fox would finally win one of those Razzie Awards for Worst Supporting Actress. But as you know, it's the Razzie, so winning is actually losing. But audiences would show up to give this film nearly $500 million at the global box office. That success would lead to a sequel just two years later, and yeah, I wish they would have taken a little bit more time to, you know, develop this one. It felt very forced and rushed, and audiences would agree losing 50% of the box office from the first one. And this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequel would get Megan Fox another Razzie nomination. But she didn't win this time, which actually means she didn't lose. So yeah, that's a step up. Megan Fox didn't win Worst Supporting Actress, yay! And the disappointing box office meant that all plans for a third Turtle movie would be scrapped. For now. And honestly, that seems to have put an end to Megan Fox's big screen career. Since 2016, she had a 15 episode run on the series New Girl, followed by her own documentary series, Legends of the Lost with Megan Fox. She got this show because Megan Fox is fascinated in the unexplained paranormal phenomenons of our world. Megan Fox has openly admitted that she believes in leprechauns, and aliens, and Bigfoot. And now it's time for some shameless self-promotion! Sorry, I have to. I'm actually working on another video right now that features Megan Fox on the Joe Blow Paranormal Network channel. Like, share, and subscribe. I have a show there called That Bigfoot Show. And yeah, I'm making an episode right now called Celebrities Who Believe in Bigfoot and Megan Fox is on that list. So if you want some uh, more Sasquatchy details, That Bigfoot Show, check it out. Shameless self-promotion over. But yeah, I just think it's cool that like I'm working on like two 
videos about Megan Fox right now, and it was totally not planned, and it, it just happened. So it's like it's just like the universe is like telling me something. Or... At this point, basically all of her films have either had extremely limited theatrical runs or have just gone directly to video. We could run through all of them now if you would like, but we actually don't have time. So here's a list of some of them. Above the Shadows, Zero Zero, The Battle of Jane Sorry, Think Like a Dog, Road, Tale Death, Midnight, End of Switchgrass, Night Heat, Big Gold Brick, Car Rush. And Good Morning. Opposite her new life partner and crime lover fiance man dude, Machine Gun Kelly, MGK. But yeah, let's get into that for a second. I feel like in today's world, more people probably know Megan Fox as MGK's lady love than they do for her acting. Since her divorce from her first husband, Brian Austin Green, she began a whirlwind romance complete with blood vials and more paparazzi craziness. And I'm sure the fascination with her love life affected her film career. She became almost like an Elizabeth Taylor figure. Who's Megan Fox dating now? OMG, WTF, MGK? But yeah, I genuinely wish these star-crossed lovers the best. I'm actually rooting for the two of them, because, you know, it's Hollywood and the tabloids and the stress. It's just hard. Megan Fox was a simple girl from Tennessee, blessed with natural good looks that landed her modeling gigs that led to acting gigs that put her in one of the biggest box office franchises of all time. Sadly, it would seem that her sex appeal was actually a hindrance to her actual acting career. Unable to ever really escape the quote-unquote hot girl stereotypical roles. And when she did, she won a Razzie for it. Megan Fox is unapologetically outspoken. And sometimes she takes her controversial comments a little bit too far for uh, society's standards. But you know what? Here's a dirty little secret. Megan Fox is actually a good actress. She can do action. She can do comedy, drama. She's a deep thinker and a woman who speaks her mind. And you know, sometimes that can get you negatively labeled. But Megan Fox, she don't give a fuck. But we haven't seen the last of her. With a prominent role in the upcoming Expendables 4, I'm sure Megan Fox will make a triumphant return to blockbuster films sooner or later. Somebody should like give her a network sitcom or at least a reality show. I'm probably not gonna watch it, but they should give her one. Megan Fox has proven herself in this horrible, horrible, crazy world they like to call the entertainment industry. And it seems like she's finally found happiness. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Megan Fox, because she's doing just fine.